Many times we have lost the simplicity of the gospel and are no longer able to explain spiritual concepts such as faith and many others in terms that even unsaved people can understand. The truth of the matter is that even saved people do not understand these spiritual concepts. Jesus used everyday life stories to explain deep spiritual concepts. Of course, sometimes it took him more than just one everyday life experience to explain a particular spiritual concept, but he took as many examples from everyday life as possible until the truth of that spiritual concept was fully revealed to the common people and could no longer be misconstrued. The Webster Dictionary defines credit as faith, reliance or resting of the mind on the truth of something said or done. Thus credit used to be called good faith. People would say, I give you the bag of rice on good faith, or I give you a bag of wheat flour on good faith, which meant on credit. You did not have the money with you right then, but I had faith that you would come up with the money to pay for it within the time agreed upon. I had peace of mind that you were a reliable person who was not a liar but a person of truth who would do what he said. Good faith from the Latin bona fides is fair and open dealing, even transparency in human interactions. It requires sincere, honest intentions and beliefs, regardless of the outcome of an action. In law, it denotes a mental and moral state of honesty and conviction regarding either the truth or the falsity of a proposition or of a body of opinion. Good faith is especially important in matters of equity. In contract law, the implied covenant of good faith is a general presumption that the parties to a contract will deal with each other honestly and fairly, so as not to destroy the right of the other party or parties to receive the benefits of the contract. In the Abbasidry of Prayer Bible Study, we have explained that faith is a credit. We have also explained that when you read the New Testament, especially the epistles, you will see most of the promises in the past tense or in the past participle, because Jesus has already done it all, even ransomed us in full by his death, burial and resurrection. We said that we now have a debit card in the New Testament. Bear in mind that in the abbasidry of prayer, we are talking to baby Christians. Just like when we have children, in the beginning they are so selfish and it is all about them. But as they grow up, they will now ask you, Mother, what do you want me to do for you? They will understand as they grow up that they must also please their parents in return, that they have responsibilities and a part to play in the house. They should not just be idle in the house. In the New Covenant, we still live by faith or by credit. Paul quotes what Habakkuk said, The just or righteous shall live by faith or by credit. Habakkuk 2 verse 4, Romans 1 verse 17, Galatians 3 verse 11 and Hebrews 10 verse 38. I am confident about each one of us that we have purpose to mature in Christ Jesus and not remain spiritual babes for the rest of our Christian walk. We understand that it is not all about us and what we can get from the Godhead, but it is all about Jesus Christ. We want to please him according to the scriptures. We are willing to be laborers together with him in his vineyard. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 Knowing that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same eagerness to the full assurance of hope to the end, that you be not slothful, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 6, 10-12 What Christians do not understand is that the covenant is a contract signed in blood. 
Each party cutting that covenant has responsibilities to keep their part of the covenant, even blood contract. When you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, to every promise of God found in the Bible, you will find a condition attached to it if you want to have its manifestation in your life. As you read the Bible and the promises of God, you will notice all the ifs and buts attached to each promise of God. So when we say we have faith in someone, what we mean is we believe that the person will be fair, sincere, honest and transparent in his interactions with us, regardless of the outcome of our action. He will not shun disclosing to us either the truth or falsity of a proposition or of a body of opinion. In this covenant or contract cut in blood, we will deal with each other honestly and fairly, so as not to destroy the right of the other party or parties to receive the benefits of the contract. God has always been transparent with us. If you want people to have faith in you or believe the words of your mouth, you must be transparent with them. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Why should God not hide from Abraham what he is doing? Because Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Genesis 18 verse 17 to 19. You see, God was fully transparent with Abraham. There was no hidden thing in the covenant God made with him. God revealed to him what his part to play was, so that he would have the manifestation of the promise of God in his life. If you claim the blessing of Abraham in Genesis 12, you will also have to walk in the steps of faith of Father Abraham. God requires in Genesis 18:17-19, as Paul told us, Romans 4, verse 12. God said to Amos, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Amos 3:3. 3, 3. Surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, verse 7. God is not a deceiver. He wants to stipulate the terms of his covenant so that as you read it you can willingly decide whether you want to walk with him or not. Moses said to the people, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life so that both you and your seed may live. That you may love the Lord your God, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cleave unto him, for he is your life and the length of your days, so that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 to 20 We have explained that the righteousness of faith is a credit account. So the Bible becomes a credit history book of God's dealings with mankind. Just like before you sign a contract with a person, you want to know his credit history. As you read the Bible, you discover how God deals with his children who are walking in righteousness, holiness, justice and uprightness, but also how he deals with ungodly people and impenitent and rebellious children who despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance and long-suffering. Romans 2 verse 4 to 6 What God did for them as they either willingly chose to act on the promises of God or to disobey God. That is what gives you confidence, that you can also walk in the steps of faith in God of those holy men and women of the Bible and expect the same manifestations of the promises of God in your life. Paul tells us about the Bible being a credit history book on God, saying, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, so that we can check the credit history of God for ourselves that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15 verse 4 
Remember those leading you who have spoken to you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 7 to 8. Jesus told us, Have faith in God. Mark 11 22. The truth is, God is the one who exercises real faith in us. Before David was even anointed king over Israel by Samuel, and before he sat on the throne of Israel, God said to Samuel, I have found David, the son of Jesse, to be a man after my own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. Acts 13 verse 22 and 1 Samuel 13 verse 14. God took a big gamble by saying to the whole world that David was such a man regardless of the outcome of David's action. David, when he fell into sexual immoralities and murder, realized that he had let God down. Thus he repented of breaking the trust God had put in him. Jesus in the new covenant, even the new contract, cut in his own blood, puts a greater faith in every born-again believer, saying to the whole world, As Jesus Christ is, so is every born-again Christian in the world. 1 John 4 verse 17 Wow! What faith Jesus has in each one of us. Imagine you recommend a friend for a job and you said to the employer and the other employees, the person I am recommending to you for this job is just like me. You have worked with me before. You have known my way, my life, the truth that is in me. This person is exactly like me in everything. John 14 verse 6 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 to 18 and 1 John 4 verse 17. What a recommendation Jesus has given to his Father about us and to the whole world around us. You truly mean, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. And as Christ Jesus is, so are we in this world. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 to 18 and 1 John 4 verse 17. Yes! God imputed, attributed or credited us with who Christ Jesus is. He also empowered us by the Holy Ghost to walk into who we are in Christ Jesus. And out of his fullness we all have received grace for grace, the unmerited favour of God and his empowerment to walk in the fullness of Christ Jesus. For the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John 1 verse 16 to 17 Paul says, And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Romans 15 verse 29 Yes, we can mature in our walk with Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 13 Now, when I say I have faith in God for a particular thing, I first of all need to find out what God says about that thing in the Bible, what is my part to play and what is God's part to play in order for me to have the manifestation of that promise in my life. The truth is, God already did his part by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter says, God according as his divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 Paul says, The communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Philemon 1 verse 6 the problem is that people do not have the knowledge of what is already theirs through Christ Jesus. Imagine you are in business with the biggest supermarket in the United Kingdom. They ask you to supply them with your goods and they will pay you in 90 days. 
If you do not believe the contract they sent you is in good faith, you will refuse to supply them with your goods. The supermarket will stipulate in the contract they have with you the kind of goods they want you to supply them with and the quality of goods they want you to supply them with. You will have to meet the standards stipulated in the contract in order for the supermarket to keep their part of the deal. Let us say the supermarket in their contract with you stipulates that you must supply them washed vegetables packed in transparent sachets. Yet you supply them with unwashed carrots, unwashed potatoes. The way you dug them full of dirt is the way you sent them to the supermarket. You say, I do not have time to wash those carrots and potatoes, let alone to put them in sealed transparent sachets. The customer can put them in any carrier bag and wash them at home before cooking. My friend, that was not the terms stipulated in the contract you signed with the supermarket in good faith. The supermarket trusted you and expected you to keep your side of the deal. Or the other scenario is, for the first two months you supplied them with washed vegetables, you sealed in sachets, but because you have not received the payment of the first month's supply yet, you decide in the third month to send them unwashed vegetables. You should have read the contract. It stipulated that you will get paid after 90 days. The same thing with the covenant we have with God. Do not just try to live a life of righteousness and holiness for a week. Let it become your lifestyle. You need to have faith in God that he will keep his part of the deal, even if you have not seen the manifestation of the promise yet. Of Sarah it is said, By faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him who had promised to be faithful. Hebrews 11 verse 11 Of Abraham it is said, Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness, Romans 4, verse 18 to 22. No wonder Habakkuk says, The just or the righteous shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, also says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrews 10, verse 38. If you truly believe that the new covenant, even the new contract signed in the blood of Jesus between you and God, was in good faith, you will live by faith like Abraham and Sarah. You will first obey him before seeing any manifestation of his promise. Abraham left his country of Ur to go to the promised land he had never seen before. Genesis 12 if you do not trust God, you will ask God, Show me first of all the land, and I will believe you, or let me see and taste some of the fruits of that land before I believe you, that it is truly a land flowing with milk and honey. Noah would not have built the ark for 120 years if he had not believed that God who promised to send the flood would be faithful to his word. Genesis 6 Paul says, Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24 It is our individual responsibility to believe that God cannot lie, and what he has said to us and called us to do will come to pass. And what he says we are now in Christ Jesus, we can walk in it, because it is God who works in us both to will and do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2 verse 13 We as born-again Christians can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Philippians 4 verse 13 
God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received word to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Numbers 23 verse 19 to 20 Let God be true, and every man a liar. Romans 3 verse 4 For I am the Lord, I do not change, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Malachi 3 verse 6 My word which goes out of my mouth, shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall certainly do what I sent it to do. Isaiah 55 verse 11 1. four, Children of God Beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he, Jesus, shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3 verse 2 The very moment we are born again, we are now children of God. It is not something which happens gradually, no, it happens instantly. Every redemptive truth that Jesus died for us happens instantly when we become born again. We have the mind of Christ. We are always in the Spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in us forever. We are saints or holy or set apart or sanctified. We are justified and we are glorified. God has translated us into his own kingdom. We are now seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 6 God is our Father. Now that all these things have been imputed to us, he expects us to practice righteousness. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. 1 John 2 verse 29 let no one deceive you. He or she who practices righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 1 John 3 verse 7 In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Neither he nor she who does not love his or her brother or sister. 1 John 3 verse 10 when God adopts us, he treats us as grown-up children, as adults, who can handle their inheritance without any tutor. The truth is, some Christians are not displaying that maturity and the fruits of mature believers, though God adopted them as mature sons and daughters and treats them that way.